Hi everyone, welcome back to Dev Dutch Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Java. So in the previous exercise, we saw how we can initialize an array by hard coding the data. And we also saw how to get this data back and print in the console. Now what we are going to see is how can we input data. But basically, let's just copy this multi array 02, control C and then control V, change it to 03. And we are going to start right here. So the first thing is, if we are going to input data, I'm going to actually need a scanner. So let's add it here, scanner, scanner, new, scanner, system.in. So always try to keep all the variable declarations at the top of your class. You could technically declare this down here, but let's keep everything that we are uh, declaring close together. Second thing, let's go back here and have two, three for the size of this multidimensional array. Now, basically what we have to do is the same as we did for printing. We have to go over one by one, but instead of printing the data that we have in memory, we need to add this, mem this data into memory. So for now, I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put here. So don't worry about this guy right now. We are going to remove this uh, later. So how can we input data into memory? So we know that we need to use a scanner. But where? Where are we putting this data? We are going to put this data inside each one of these positions that we have here. So let's change this message a little bit. Let's just press Ctrl X. And then I'm going to add semicolon here. Actually, column. And then scanner.nextInt. Where should I put these numbers? Well, basically, I have to put these numbers in multi array position i j let's see how it works and let's remove this guy control x or just delete control shift f10 okay so zero zero uh well one two three four five six and we have exactly the same result so as you can see we just have to do the same thing but instead of just printing the data we just have to add the data there now, in the previous video, I told you that I was going to show you a better way to, to have like uh, strings formatted. And this is called string interpolation. Most languages, uh, at least most high level languages, they will provide you a way to work with string interpolation. Basically, with string interpolation, you don't have to keep concatenating. So basically, Java will change based on what you are passing during runtime when you are executing the program. So how can we do that here? This is like very specific to Java, this syntax. First, what I want. I want to have the string and I want here i and j. So how do we do that? So I need something, kind of a placeholder, that will be replaced. And since we are working with numbers, is percentage %d. So I want two numbers, percent %g. This basically will be replaced with some values. Now, which values? And this is the part where it is very specific to Java. You just have to type after the the book quotes dot formatted. So everything that you see here when you press dot is called methods. These methods they will change something in this string. In this case, we want string interpolation. So I just have to use formatted. And now, what are the values that I want to be replaced. So they should be in order. For example, I want the first percent G to be I. So I will put here I. And then I have two. I will use comma to add more. So it will be I the first one and the second will be J. So the order is important. So you can just hover over, you will see some, some kind of warning from uh, IntelliJ. But if you want, you can click here and it will remove the warning. It will do the same thing. I'm going to press. It is exactly the same thing. Uh, in this case, this is another method that can do that for us. But for now, let's keep like this. And then maybe we talk about the print F. So this is one way of doing. And this is, if you hover over and you press, this is exactly the same way. But it's just a different syntax. The result will be the same. Let's keep this for now. Control Shift F10. 
and as you can see here we have zero zero so it replaced successfully now we can add here one two three four five six and then we have the results so based on that we can also improve so for example let's improve here and let's do the same so i want two brackets oops between strings so i want two brackets and after these two brackets here I have my array, right? But I still need to replace here. I want to put something inside. Percentage D, percentage D, and then I need something. What is this something? Well, this something is very simple. I want to have I and J. But then take a look at here. Can you see that we are still using concatenation to get the values here from this multi array? What's the result of this multi array? So when we print this multi array, we are getting an integer back, basically the same value as we have i and j. So I can do the following. I can say, hey, here, just add another percentage d. And now in my format, instead of doing this concatenation, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, hey, now you have three guys. So you can just add parentheses here and press Ctrl Alt L. So as you can see, this one will be I, this one will be J, and this one will be the value that we have inside multi array. Ctrl Shift F10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we have exactly the same result. But really, I saw that you can also use print F. Well, print F is basically the same thing. It's going to print formatted. So you have Instead of using like this with dot formatted, you just add a comma and you pass the values inside like this. So instead of calling a method here, you just put your string and then you put one comma and everything that comes after this comma will replace this. But there is one problem. The printf by default will not jump a line. So if you execute now, and you press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you will see that they are going to be in the same line. To jump a line, you have to use percentage n. And now it's going to jump a line after the first input. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then every time this is executed, it's going to print this data and jump one line. Okay, so this was just a little extra that will help you to have your code a little bit more formatted. So I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye bye.